Okay. 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 The red and gray traces track the position of the device and the support structure. If they move in opposite directions, it's a vibrational artifact. If they move in the same direction, it's a real force. Conservation of momentum requires that. Okay, and as you can see, they move in the same direction, which is the only reason why I'm talking to you right now. Down here is the waveforms of the voltage and the current being supplied to the device during the run. And this shows an FFT power spectrum of the current being divided to, to, delivered to the device. What you'll notice in the FFT spectrum is that when you get that pulse, there are second and fourth harmonics present in the signal. This is an internally generated harmonic re reaction in the device itself. Signal being supplied is pure sine at 32.8 kilohertz. Okay, so you got the waveforms and you got the FFT of the current being displayed down there. Let me run it for you again. This is, by the way, hanging on a roughly two meter pendulum. Okay, with mon nylon monofill suspension, which holds this green plastic thing here to which this device is attached. I'll run it again. There we go. Notice the power spectrum and all that. Switching transients, beginning at the end, and a steady thrust for five seconds. Actually, you can run it longer than that. This was just a test, part of a test for the influence of magnetic fields, okay? So what you're looking at is a clear, God knows how many sigma signal of a real thrust event being produced. And it's not a vibrational artifact. The support structure and the device track together, okay? So for those of you who are interested in actually getting to nearby stars. Mock effects are not yet dead, notwithstanding Martin's most <laughs> determined efforts. He's not using the right equipment to exclude something like this. Thank you for your time and sorry to be an ad on <laughs> unannounced and all that. Thanks, Charles. I'll be sending you uh, document with some of this stuff in it and all that for your interest. And if anybody else is interested, just email me, jwoodward at fullerton.edu. And I'll be happy to supply the update document that's in progress now too. Thank you. Great, thanks, Jim. Really appreciate the update and uh, of your recent work and recent results. And um, I know you're doing a, um, a air, table, right? Uh, no, test. This, are you working uh, on that or? Yes, there, there's a group of us. There are about a half a dozen, seven or eight people, all of whom are working on this. And Michelle Broyles in Pine, Colorado has constructed an air table. The intent is to get a, an array of these things that produced on the order of about a millinute trust each get an array of three or four of them that will hopefully move the air table. The air table has a mass of something like 22 kilograms. So oh moving my. it uh -huh. in an obvious way <laughs> is not a trivial matter. Right, right. Yeah, that's quite quite the mass. But uh, yeah, that, that's an interesting test as well. Yes. So yeah. Yeah, yeah thank you for sharing that. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if anyone has any comments or questions they would like to add in. Um, and so, you know, Jim, I, I, others have mentioned this, but I really appreciate you publishing your work and putting it out there and, you know, and working with others and uh, to, you know, get to the bottom of what's going on. And it's just uh, really to be commended. So thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah.